Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today the session is about WebSocket and server side events. Server side events. So, in the, during this uh, small talk, I am planning to cover about uh, the protocols which are using those two uh, technologies, as well as uh, kind of a comparison about like for you to get some understanding about when to use uh, these technologies. So, before going into the details, I think it's better to understand. Uh, the problem which those two technologies are going to solve. So it's about uh, how we are handling real-time web applications. For an example, like Facebook or WhatsApp or any other stock exchange applications, stuff like that. So what will happen is, so in order to get a give a proper user experience to your customer, so you need to notify or send whatever the updates real-time, which the events which are happening in the real-time. So maybe that events might have kind of a monetary value or something important for your life. So that's the non-functional requirement bind with uh, the real-time web application. So in early days, uh, the traditional solution for that is a kind of a polling mechanism. So it's a well-known mechanism. So what will happen is uh, from the, so when it comes to polling, there are two flavors of it. Number one is uh, short-term polling, and the other one is long-term polling. With the polling, what will happen is client uh, sends requests to the server infrequently, frequently to get the updates. With the long polling, what will happen is uh, client sends requests to the server. Server decide whether there are any updates for this that particular client or not. There, if there are no updates, then server hold the connection until there is even specific event happens for the particular connection. So those are the two types of uh, polling mechanism. So there are some drawbacks associated with that particular that those approaches. So number one is HTTP all overhead. So if you consider about an application which has maybe thousands of user users user base, if you want to provide a real time application, think about the scenario: all your clients are connecting to your server. Think the network traffic you are generating. So especially. Uh, if you are dealing with HTTPS, for each and every request, there is going to be a TLS handshake. And some of the applications uh, use uh, headers like JWT. So, if, of course, uh, if you consider the JWT, it carries a lot of information. That means, uh, the compared to header sizes of the others, so size C is also larger than the normal header. So, it will impact for your network traffic as well. So, because of uh, and also, uh, of course, uh, because of the polling, there is unnecessary load in the server. So normally, people say 80% of your request uh, for the polling mechanism are useless because you will end up with no data scenario. Uh, and also, let's say, think about uh, a scenario you are dealing with a third party, which has kind of a rate limit. So if you want to provide a real-time web application, that's also going to be a uh, problem because you can't serve your clients as expected, expected. And of course, the wait time. So maximum wait time would be the uh, polling interval. So in that case, it's not going to be the real time. So because of these drawbacks, so people came up with a different approach. Just so one of them is a server side event. So with server side event, what will happen is so it's basically built top of on top of uh, HTTP pro protocol. So what will happen is from the client, it uh, establish a connection, which is uh, a stream connection. It, it accepts stream. And if your server supports that, it will acknowledge and it will send HTTP OK with the content time. After that, uh, that particular connection is reusable, uh, can be used to send events from server to client. So we call it kind of a half duplex approach where the only the only the server can communicate with the client so yeah so this is the uh, the protocol that i have mentioned and compared to polling so since because since we already have a connection so the latency is much lesser than the other approach yeah moving on uh, so this is the kind of like server side event server send event is kind of a streaming mechanism where you can send the data in the uh, some expected format. For an example, uh, this is the 
expected format which almost all the browsers accept. So these are the like standards uh, which follows by Mozilla, Chrome and all. So there are attributes like event, ID, data, retry, etc. So if you consider the ID, ID means the, the ID of the particular event. So this is going to be used when you like, let's say if you have a client and the client got reconnected. So server can utilize this ID to uh, detect, decide whether I should send you all the feedback, so whatever, the, all the rest of the things. And likewise, those are like, uh, this is the section where you have, you can send the data. So you can see that uh, escape character saying that, uh, as, you, as I said, this is a stream. So that you can send the data, you, you don't need to send the entire payload, you can send half, like partial data. So you can, by using this uh, escape character, you can say that, you can say the client, I'm sending further further more data, and once you're dealing done with the payload, you can say that uh, I'm done. So double uh, this notation says it's completed. So most of the all the browsers understand this uh, message mechanism, and according to that, it will dispatch whatever the uh, uh, window event like uh, listener events. So that's about the uh, server sent events. So let's talk about the web sockets. So in web sockets, uh, unlike the server send events, it's a we call it a full duplex bidirectional communication where both client and server can communicate each other. So you, as you can see, uh, initially client going to make a request, which is a, which is a HTTP connection, saying that asking requesting the server to say that uh, I need to upgrade my I upgrade or change my connection to HTTP, and if your server supports HTTP uh, web sockets, it will respond you saying that uh, protocol switch happens and it will change to uh, socket. So after that, you have the this channel where your client and server can uh, send messages to each other. And here in this, in this approach, uh, either one party can close the connection as well. So we call it, uh, so, so I mentioned this also that like it's a message-based protocol, not like the HTTP streaming. And this approach is also uh, extremely low overhead because of there are no any additional TLS handshakes or additional payload trans payload transmission with across the network. So let's talk about kind of a comparison between those two technologies. So I already mentioned this like uh, WebSockets is bidirectional, whereas the server send event is half duplex and with uh, web sockets uh, there are no retry mechanism like if the client got detect uh, disconnected it will not uh, reconnect automatically but uh, instead of that it will have kind of a, like uh, another callback call uh, it when the client got disconnected it will trigger that client disconnected callback so from your client you can do whatever the decision making like whether you need to recreate uh, reconnect or not Whereas uh, the server set event, the reconnect and reconnect part is already inbuilt, so you don't you don't need to um, do much effort to do the reconnection. But the problem here is, uh, so for the server side, you will not get notified until you try to send a message to client. Maybe let's think about scenario where you are dealing with uh, some process heavy activity which needs to be sent uh, to the client. So you do your processing and you ended up, you can notify, get notified right after trying to send the message to client. So that means whatever the things that you have done so far is uh, not relevant, like you should basically avoid it. And uh, WebSocket is widely used in most of the browsers, like native support is there, whereas some of the browsers doesn't support uh, server sent events, but of course you can polyfill your browser and get the uh, functionality done. But uh, when it comes to polyfill, you need to be very careful because some underlying implementations uh, polyfill the server sent event as a kind of a poly mechanism, then you will never know like what will happen and un underline. So you need to be very careful about polyfilling with the server sent event. And this is also another good thing in server WebSocket. You can transmit both binary and UTF, whereas in server sent event, only UTF-8. And again, uh, for WebSockets, there are no limitations on uh, connections on browser. 
but in the server side events, uh, Mozilla and Firefox has its own limitation where you can have only up to six connection per uh, domain. So that's from the browser's perspective, they have marked it as a won't fix because they think that connecting, having multiple connections to the same domain is not a valid scenario in this context. So it's not, not going to be fixed from the browser's point of, point of view as well. And also, uh, so as I mentioned, WebSocket is not, not a HTTP based protocol, it's a custom protocol. So you might have some, uh, your network layer components like firewalls, proxy, load balances. So sometimes they will not understand your protocol and you will end up with some complications. So this is a kind of a disadvantage of using WebSocket. WebSocket, whereas uh, in server side event, since it's HTTP, so most your network components understand it and work expectedly. So if you consider about WebSocket, so it will always, so if you want to apply WebSocket, so applications like where you need the two-way communication, especially chat application and also browser gaming and collaborative web wiki application, you can easily go ahead and use this, this approach. So the reason I'm saying is like, if you really consider about uh, chat application, you need to send the messages and receive messages as well. In order to send the message, you can always go ahead with HTTP approach, but since there can be HTTP header or uh, traffic or the network traffic, you can avoid it using using a WebSocket channel. So that is why people always recommend to go ahead with uh, WebSockets for chat, these kind of applications. And for server sent events, so basically it's good for kind of a dash, dashboard perspective. So if you are familiar with uh, Facebook, if you go live in Facebook, you can see like uh, there are live, live reactions and live comments are happening. So the, the way they have done is, so there are service, uh, APIs which provide this information as a stream. So if you if your client connected to the that particular stream, you can easily show that information without any trouble. And also things like stock streaming, news feeds, uh, for those kind of application, uh, service and event is kind of like good. And the other thing is, if you want to deal with WebSocket uh, protocol, you might need to do some additional framework level changes, like some of your browsers or the, some of your web containers doesn't support inbuilt. So you need to add some plugins or framework. So especially in our web post, in order to achieve it, we have uh, added a library called ComedD. That's the place where you enable the WebSocket communication. So this might bring some complexity for your projects as well. So finally, so I just wanted to show this slide about the uh, network bandwidth consumption. So the blue line says a poly mechanism, like this is a span across five minutes. So it's kind of like getting some information of uh, this particular data source, uh, resource. So blue line says uh, polling, uh, this one long polling, so it says server sent event, green line. So you can see the difference if you are using poly mechanism, how much of data you are transmitting across the network. So it's always good practice to, if you are dealing with some sort of application, it's always Advisable to use uh, either WebSockets or server sent events uh, based on your requirements. I think uh, that's pretty much about the session. I think, uh, thank you.